Yeah. Let's do it. So how'd your panel go? You know, the panel actually was really wonderful because uh, the fan questions especially were really insightful. You know, sometimes there's like the fan questions of like, what would you rather be? A werewolf or like a zombie? <laughs> and, uh, and they were just, they were clearly people that watched the show, knew like knew the characters really well, wanted questions answered about story and character. They also just wanted to hear from the actors about their experience, their emotional experience. So we walked off and we were like, that was really fun. It actually made us feel really good. So it was awesome. good. So what can we expect from this spin-off? Where are we? Well, um, you know, honestly, I, you know, I just, I just sit in the panel, and I really, truly believe it. That, that, you know, the beauty of this show is that we are able to take kind of the the tonal foundation that we began with the Vampire Diaries, and 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 it graduate it up to the next level of, of you know, from adolescence to adulthood. Um, it's 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 darker. Oh, okay. It's more gothic. It's a bit more operatic. There'll be more flashbacks. Uh, a lot of storytelling about the history of these people. You know, who have obviously been alive for so long. A lot more um, sort of visceral in its in its violence, but really also tremendously and deeply emotional because at, at the at the end of it, it is it's I keep calling it a family drama, and I mean it. I mean not to soften the genre; the genre will be there in spades. Um, but it really is it's a it's a show about the power of family and and the lengths you will go to to protect it, and how deep the wounds are when you betray it. So, speaking of emotion, Jill, um, how will class like you know, be dealing with? Class? Like this whole baby, and now like suddenly we're becoming a father. Like, will we see like a really intense sort of? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, the, the you know the, the the goal with Klaus, you know, the Vampire Diaries had three years to fall madly in love with him, um, love him and hate him at the same time. And new viewers coming into this in the beginning might just hate his guts for a little while. And what's fun about that for us is he gets to misbehave in all those wicked, wicked ways that you know <laughs> that we love to see um, because he's not he's not the hero of the show in, in the true definition of the word, and yet he is because it is his redemption that we are seeking, and um, so he's, a, he's a, the anti-hero, the, the, the villain in transformation, however you want to look at it, um, but he, I mean, he still does some stupid stuff when he gets mad. <laughs> he still acts out, and he's still diabolical in ways that you're just like, dude, pull it together. So. But what he's still looking forward to inspiring in terms of fan reactions, and what are you looking forward to seeing as people watch this? Series. Well, what I'm well, truthfully what I'm hoping is that the fans dive into the world of like not just being excited about the original family the unit of three itself, but how each individual genre element of the show is rooted in its own kind of supernatural mystery. We have the witch community, and ultimately down the road, the werewolf community that will explore via Haley's quest to find secrets and answers about her family, uh, and then we'll have a human contingency that in the beginning will be represented by a cami by Leah Pipe's character but will grow and grow and grow and so it it is really a battle for territory um, and you know all brought back around to the idea of this is our home and we have to fight for it you know and we don't want you here um, so I think that uh, I hope that they get as invested in the ensemble as they ultimately did on the Vampire Diaries it took some time on Vampire a lot of humans you know it takes time to give them enough to do and, and to really flesh those characters out Tyler Lockwood and Caroline Forbes are two characters that weren't really fleshed out much in the first season at all. And then it wasn't until we were able to explore them supernaturally that we really got to know them as people. Here we kind of get to dive right in and present a world of great, vivid characters from the get-go. I love Marcel in the background. Oh, Marcel, Marcel. How did you kind of go about making a worthy adversary for Klaus? Well, that was the challenge because Klaus, I mean, even just that accent, you know, I mean, you've got this... He's, you know, he's evil and delicious, and and he can be funny and he can be cruel, and you know, and so and 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 Joseph is so good at it. So we're like, well, who the hell is gonna, you know, be able to one just hold his own as an actor, but two be a very different villain, and um, and so we went with the idea of Marcel being this sort of great, like, you know, we always kind of like thought of him as like a Lenny Kravitz type, you know, just like like life party, come on in, like, hey man, we're off 
friends here, and I just almost like play in opposition to Klaus, who Klaus will like woo, lure you in with a sly little grin, whereas like Marcel will open you in with that big warm smile, but then like boom, like stab you in the back. You know? So and, and you know, and Charles is just like the dream. He's the dream embodiment of exactly what we thought the character would be. So it worked out perfectly. Was it really hard to find. Yeah. No, that's the best part. Is it wasn't like I mean we definitely had many sessions, but like it was pretty clear when we get with you know Vampire Diaries we went back to the studio the network a dozen times trying to like make the right choices for some of the characters and on this we were basically cast like every time we went in we had like new characters cast and, and no, there was nobody that we had to like lay down on our swords for and it was just pretty fairly obvious to everybody that we were making the right decisions. What about Caroline and Klaus? Caroline and Klaus. Is she going to make it crossover? Yeah I mean honestly <laughs> You know, we I, put it this way: when we continue to play their story in season four and draw them closer, because that's what the Vampire Diaries earned. You know, we really believed that that was the path for those two characters to go down, and so we didn't. But knowing the spin-off might happen, we didn't want to make a bunch of false promises that we couldn't deliver on. But we also didn't want to say, "Oh, none of what you just saw matters." Like we didn't want to brush it aside. So our challenge will be: how can we keep her in that world? like as a notion and an idea and then hopefully eventually as a person you know in, in Caroline form Ken Sackler doing a spot and that comes down to scheduling you know logistics etc so you know I am keeping my fingers well, crossed love so it has to work it has to work I mean love, 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 love. okay so when you looked at the inspiration like for the originals and such and like I know that with the Vampire Diaries you had a long term plan and where everyone needs to see is that the same with the originals like are you looking at it like it needs to be like four seasons at least to or is it just the first season you know I'll tell you this like I know for a fact that this you know if this only went 13 it would be the greatest miniseries of all time um, but it would by no means be the end it would just be the end of a chapter that could then grow and become another chapter and add another layer I mean there's so much in New Orleans and the French Quarter specifically is its own version of a small town so if you think small town drama family drama and then you layer super natural on top of it and weave it through you could do that forever so uh, we're not gonna put any limits on ourselves as far as how long we think this needs to go thanks you guys